Hey folks, Doxy here, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we get to play with some redstone. And not just any redstone, but the redstone that is effectively the focal point of everything we've done up to this point. And really even the next step is an accessory to what it is we're doing here today. And what we're doing here today is setting up the pistons for the lock system and crushing mechanism of this entire EXP farm. And the way this works is that you have two locks here, one here, one here, that keeps mobs in one of three areas, here, here, or here. And here they have, hopefully, full ex uh, They have full, that's the word I'm looking for, health. Here you take them down to one hit, or two hits if they're zombies. And here you just hit at their ankles and take their items and XP from them as they fall into a little puff of smoke. And the way the redstone works is with a signal here. I might take a couple because there are a lot there. They get moved down into this chamber here. Here they'll get crushed magic number is uh, 19 now everything except for zombies should be one hit zombies should be uh, two hit kill now and then with this they get moved over and from here you just hit at their ankles and collect their XP. And they'd be dropping items, but I have items turned off right now. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, while they hang out over here, we're going to build one right here. Now, as we build this, we want to set up our reference location. And a reference location is going to be here. And this is going to be the block that the mobs stand on. And you're going to be hitting at their ankles here and collecting the XP. This is probably going to be a central point of everything if you're putting this much effort into it. This this really should be a very chosen location, not just haphazardly uh, well, chosen. And the tube that's going to supply the mobs is actually going to be one, two over and five up. Count that. One, two over, and one, two, three, four, five up. There you go. Just so you get the spacing just right. And then you want to set up your kind of zigzag lightning bolt tubing. So when you follow the path of the mob, the mob will fall down one, two spaces, be able to move left one space, fall down two more spaces, move left one space, and able to fall one, two more down so that they'd be standing on this. And you can have it zigzag to the other side or even forward or back if you want to. Actually, I don't know if you can make it go back, but forward if you really want to. And of course, you want to uh, fill in the glass on the side so that they don't escape from their pending doom. And now that you have your glass in place, you'll be wanting to put in your solid blocks, and these solid blocks are going to be the ones that the sticky pistons are going to be acting on. And those solid blocks are going to be right here. Now these lapis lazuli blocks here and here are going to be your upper and lower lock, and these are going to be your crushing pistons of deathishness. You do want these to be solid blocks, because if they're glass blocks or some other non-solid blocks like leaves or something, there is a high possibility, especially when you have a high density of mobs in this area here, that they'll just kind of casually slip out, and if it's a creeper, there goes all your hard work. And now with your solid blocks in place, looking at this from the back, you'll want to put in your pistons. 
and your pistons are going to be right here. Of course, for your lock system, you'll be wanting them to be facing inward on either side of your lapis blocks, or you can use whatever solid block you want. You don't need to use your lapis. And you're going to want two pistons pushing into your blocks of death, whatever you choose those to be, whether it's circle block or whatever. And while I admit you can get by with just one piston for the crusher, I like to be thorough and make sure that there's no chance that they're not taking that suffocation damage. And once you have your pistons in place, you'll want to start on the redstone. And I have the upper and lower locks on colored wool, as is the convention. You don't have to use colored wool, you can use whatever solid block that you can put redstone on, it doesn't matter. But for the sake of simplicity for this tutorial, I'm using colored wool. You'll want to stagger down a block for all four lock pistons. And on the far side, because it goes in this way here, on the far side you'll be wanting to put repeaters of one tick, which is the minimum. And on the inside, which is the direction that everything is going, you will want to be putting in some redstone. And once you have this basic setup put in place, you can go ahead and, working from the bottom up, put in the redstone system for the bottom lock. And the way this works is from the one block that you put in place, it comes out two, drops down one, extends for a total of four, staggers up one, staggers up another, and you have redstone on everything except for this block right here, instead you have a torch, and then you add another block to the back of the one block that you put over here, and it has another piece of redstone on it. For the crushers, the crushers are really quite easy. All you have to do is add three blocks with redstone on it. Just drop it back like that. Really simple. And for your top, because you have to dodge both the signal for the crusher pistons and your piping, you'll have to drop it back three, and you'll want this little extension here for the next part. It'll make life easier. Pull it two to the side, stagger it up one, put a redstone torch right there, and then from the one block that you put here, you'll want to extend it back two more, putting redstone on everything except for right there. It doesn't matter if you put redstone there and there or not, you just don't need it. And now, with some levers, let's put them here, here, and here. As this one gets switched, that'll move to the left there. As this one gets switched, it'll move to the left there. And as this comes forward, as, well, as that gets switched, these pistons come forward and you are done. And if you were thinking, hey, that was painless, that's because it kind of is. Well, unless you're a mob, um, that actually wasn't intended to be a pun. This is kind of awkward. Right, so like the first video of each of these steps that I've given so far, I'm going to give you a breakdown on how to build this from the bottom up, step by step, for you to study in case for whatever reason you didn't catch what it was I was showing you. And then I'm going to show it to you again here with a grid in case something somewhere doesn't quite add up. Right, now that you have that situated, usually at this point in my videos, I turn around and go, hey, you can click this video, or you can click that video, or you can do this, or you can do that. I'm actually going to skip out on that entirely. I'm just actually going to add that to the video right here. Right, so now that I have everything situated, I'm just going to walk you through this. There are a couple things that you should know. And the first thing that I need to communicate is that it's probably not actually the best of ideas to make everything out of glass like I did here. It's probably actually a really good idea to have these blocks in the back here 
a, some sort of solid block. Because when you have a lot of mobs here and pistons involved, sometimes they won't get pushed by the pistons at all. And in a worst case scenario, you'll get a creeper to slip through and destroy everything. And that's never a good thing. Never. So while you can go ahead and make everything a solid block, there are a total of three blocks that I recommend you keep transparent. And they are here, here, and here. And this is really just a recommendation if you're the obsessive compulsive type, and I don't know why you would be. Uh, but there is a possibility that once in a blue moon, as the pistons move and mobs are falling, their head might clip into this block here, and take a moment of suffocation damage into this block here and take a moment of suffocation damage or this block here and take a moment of suffocation damage. As far as odds go, it's pretty minimal and as far as mobs that come through, it's not really going to be that much of a loss. But the solid blocks on the back are actually a sound recommendation for everybody, not just the anal retentive. The other thing that you can do is over here, you can of course set up multiple pistons and on top of looking more badass than even that one over there you get the false sense of security that everything's going to work better and that's not actually true there is a minor problem with this piston right here everything else is beautiful the only problem is that as this piston extends the block that becomes the uh, piston extension is actually a transparent block. And as it moves, mobs have a chance to actually fall through that block. But if that's something you're willing to hazard, go ahead, this thing is beautiful. Right, so now that I have a test subject to demonstrate this, the order of the system is top lock, crusher, bottom lock. Okay. So, top lock, moves them into the crusher, crusher, crushes, but as he's getting crushed here, it is entirely likely, and if not anything probable, that a new mob will join the queue. And as this guy gets done with his crushing, it's time for the bottom lock. But if you look here, he's actually standing on top of the bottom lock. And as the bottom lock moves over, he moves into place, but he actually glitches down a block. Not the worst thing ever, because as the bottom one retracts, the top lock, even though only his head's in the way, will push him over and appropriately into place in line for the crusher. Now. If you're scared that something is going to make its way out of here, you can go ahead and cover that up with a block too. It's just something you should be aware of if you're deciding to turn this into a piston heaven. The other thing that you need to know is that in order for the setup to work, you need to add a block here, a block here, a block here, and a block here. You'll actually need to move that redstone repeater back to there and that redstone repeater just gets moved up. So now that I've shown you the videos that I would have made and there's really only one step left, you can go ahead and click the link to move on to that one step because that one step is pretty fantastic because in it I show you how to with a single f switch flip, it will trigger an endless loop of automation where the mobs will be inflicted with the right amount of damage so that everything except for zombies are one hit, zombies will be two, and it'll just repeat until you switch it off again. And when you switch it off, It'll continue with the rest of the loop and make ready to be turned on again. Look at that. Amazing. 